Is Russia signaling that it's ready for the negotiating table? Plus, is Ukraine's Kherson operation still going strong? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. It's October 30th, excuse me, 2023. This is your daily Ukraine update. Let's get right into it. Okay, first, taking a look at the control map, one of the most noteworthy changes is actually that the entire, uh, basically, area between uh, Kherson and the, well, well Russian-controlled Kherson and Ukrainian-controlled Kherson, uh, the Dnipro, is now listed as contested. So there's no change in territory necessarily, but there is some signs, oh, well, a little bit of minor control updates you can see here. This is reporting Russian forces actually occupying this small little marshland here. Uh, but other than that, you're really just seeing a really significant um, uh increase in combat activity along this line. Um, and it may reflect uh, that Ukraine is continuing its operation uh, to cross the Dnipro and establish a bridgehead. And it, there's some reports actually that Russia fired the commander of this grouping of forces in Kherson for this exact reason, because it was so embarrassing for Ukrainian forces to cross this river, establish a bridgehead, operate for at least several days, possibly, possibly still operating. Um, and the level of embarrassment was just seen as um, unacceptable to the Kremlin. So uh, that's a sign from the Kremlin that despite their assurances that this was no big deal, it apparently was a pretty big deal for them. The other major change is inside of Avdivka, actually near the town of Vodiane. You could see uh, Russian forces pushing a little bit down this roadway here, moving to increase the pressure on Ukrainian forces uh, uh, in Optina. Um and again, this is actually a significant move because it reflects uh, that the one, they're moving along a roadway, which is significant. It also is putting pressure inward on Avdivka. You can see a small change occurring here as well with a narrowing of the contested region, but Russian control reported of this windbreak here. And, and again, these are two small but but uh, significant moves because, again, they are putting pressure on these few roadways out into and out of Avdivka. Um, you can see that, you know, when we zoom in, there's still a, a pretty wide network of ways into and out of Avdivka. So Russia's got a lot of a lot more work it'll have to do before it can really say that it's cutting off Russian or Ukrainian forces holding the center of the town. Um, but it's still indicative that Russia hasn't quite abandoned its Avdivka offensive. It's still willing to grind into it for a while longer. Um, other than that, looking at the combat map, uh, you can see that just a lot of shelling, no reported uh, combat, ground combat right now, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. It just means the reports aren't necessarily all in yet. Um, what I thought was also significant... Again, as we talked about, Russian commander of the Dnieper grouping of forces, Oleg Marakevich, uh, commander of airborne troops, Mikhail Toplinsky, uh, has replaced him, uh, again, likely following this failure um, and, and lack of response to the Ukrainian incursion into Kherson. Guys, you know, if you've been on this channel for more than 30 seconds, uh, you know that I cannot stand the fact that energy drinks are like five bucks a pop now. Um, inflation's crazy, yo. That's why I invented Strike Gum. By I invented, I mean, I worked with a manufacturer here in the US of A um, to produce uh, Strike Gum. This is 90 milligrams of caffeine, Oop. 90 milligrams of caffeine in every single piece. You can see here that these we've gotten an entire energy drinks worth of caffeine in every single piece. Um, it has zero sugar, just five calories. So none of the ma massive sugar bombs that you get from, uh, you know, conventional energy drinks. Plus we've got our trays on sale right now. So, uh, this is 75 pieces, right? So it's got the caffeine equivalent of 75 energy drinks, but it works out with the sale to like 68 cents a, a piece. So if you're interested in saving some money on energy drinks, plus best of all, 50% of the profits from this first production run of strike gum are going to be donated to Ukrainian charities that aid civilians uh, who've been injured or displaced in the conflict. So if you want to uh, you know, get a great energy drink alternative plus support Ukraine, check us out at strikegum.com. Okay, so talking, a little, actually, let's talk about one other, what I thought was the most significant thing. This is Belarus's Lukashenko. He's saying that Ukraine-Russia conflict, he says it's at a stalemate and he urges talks. Now, 
uh, I want to point out that Lukashenko, first off, famous for allegedly brokering the deal that didn't hold up for very long between Putin and um, Prigozhin, right, which stomped Prigozhin's coup. And certainly uh, Putin probably owed uh, Lukashenko more than a couple favors just as a result of that brokering, even though Putin uh, seemed to have uh, gone back on his deal. Um, but what's also interesting, one, is that usually when you have these sort of lackeys make these statements, it's because officially the Putin, it, you know, if he's still leading Russia, uh, he hasn't really made a public appearance as far as I know in the last week. Um but uh, someone like Lukashenko, who's not directly associated with the Russian government, can come out and say things that maybe Putin can't politically. But because he's such a st stark ally, a staunch ally, uh, you can be certain that he's not saying these things. He's not, he's not blowing hot air, right? He's saying it with real insight into this, the mindset of senior leaders in the Kremlin. And when you have... Um, what he's saying is that basically he's like the conflict is at a stalemate and he's urging peace talks. Now, I want to point out this is not necessarily the same thing as Russia capitulating. Uh, Russia would be very happy to uh, gain official ownership of uh, a recognized uh, possession of Crimea, Zaporizhia, Kherson, uh, this half of Kharkiv, Luhansk, and Donetsk. Uh, you know, this is this is to them a massive win. Uh, this is huge portions of their Russian speaking population. This would ensure that Ukraine can't become a member of NATO because obviously with their own territory contested, um, it would also give them the ability to create these fictional republics, um, that can enter sort of the Russian sphere. Uh, so to be clear, um, this idea that uh, you know, these peace talks are some sort of capitulation by Russia. Maybe that's a little, a little forward, but what it does say is that Russia may be recognizing that its ability to conduct offensive operations is over. And this may be some form of signaling that they don't expect, right? That's, I think this big push in Avdivka was their best last surge to try to break the Ukrainian forces. And it, by all accounts failed, meaning that now they have to go and they say, listen, we need to talk about this. Um, it, the fact that, again, a, a, a Kremlin insider like Lukashenko is willing to say that they've made no progress and lost many lives, um, is actually a pretty big admission by a, uh, Kremlin insider. So, um, it, you know, the fact that this is even happening, I think, is a positive sign uh, for the conflict, right? It's a recognition by Russia of the sort of uh, untenability of their position. Now, this may mean for Ukraine that they need to double down, right? That Russia is getting desperate and now's the time to push. But it remains to be seen where this is going to go from here. Anyway, guys, that's all I had. Thank you so much to our Colonel tier members. Thanks to our Lieutenant tier members at CombatVetNews.com. Uh, thanks to all the members of CombatVetNews.com. I couldn't do this without you guys. I appreciate you so much. Hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.